Hi everyone, I'm Kemil and this is Kem with Kem. Now in today's session, we're going to be working question 5, CXC, CSEC Chemistry Paper 2 from May, June 2023. We're zooming in. Now, if you'd like to see the full workout, be sure to check the link in the description below. Remember to like if you find value, share, and uh, consider subscribing. Now let us just get right into it. All right, so this is number five, part, well, 5A. Anaerobic fermentation occurs when yeast is used in the production of wine. Yeast, very important. All right, part one, define the term anaerobic fermentation. All right, so fermentation, we know once, um, once something ferments, it's forming an alcohol. And if they say anaerobic, we'll have to tell them what anaerobic means. Aerobic, air, and means without. So we're looking at the formation of alcohol in the absence of oxygen. So if we put that, we'll get our full marks. So we could say it's the conversion of glucose to alcohol in the absence of oxygen. All right, and they said here that when yeast is used, so when they ask us now why high temperatures are not suitable for anaerobic fermentation in part two, we have to bear in mind that in yeast would have um, an enzyme and high temperatures would actually destroy the enzyme that is in yeast. That would actually cause them to become, you could say denatured, but if you say high temperatures will kill the enzymes um, in yeast or will destroy the enzyme in yeast, then that will give you the marks. So the high temperatures will destroy the yeast, making the enzyme inactive. And they want us to write a balanced equation for the anaerobic fermentation of glucose. That's part three. So that's C6H12O6. That's in aqueous medium. This, we're not using any air. It's anaerobic. So we need to just write this forming ethanol, C2H5. Perhaps ethanol is a theme for this paper because this is the third time we're encountering ethanol or we have to do something with ethanol. So this will be ethanol here in aqueous medium. I guess we'd have to distill it. We'd have to distill it to actually get the, the ethanol from the water. It's not like our equation earlier where we saw sodium, a very reactive metal, um, a very reactive metal reacting with um ethanol. So would get this would get CO2 and to balance we have six carbons on the left we would need change the color here we would need two here and that would make four and then you know you can look at it we put two right here that would fix it because we need six twelve hydrogen so two five ten plus two times one there two so that would give us our 12 and then for the oxygen we'd have two times this one here which is two and then two two is four so everything is checked so that will give us our full mark so there we go we have five already let's go for the other 10. part b of five soaps are formed from the alkaline hydrolysis or saponification of natural oils and fats esters compound e Shown below is an ester which is hydrolyzed by aqueous sodium hydroxide. Draw the fully displayed structures of the hydrolysis products. So um, what you could do if you're at this point and I don't want to say clueless, I'm recommending that you check um, the link in the description below um, that outlines, well, it, that outlines reactions of esters. All right. So if you, if you had covered that before the exam, then you should be. You should be good. All right. So this is an ester. So whenever we're going to um, hydrolyze, or we're going to have hydrolysis of an ester, we always cut right here. Right. So cut right there. So we can draw our pair of scissors right there. That's where we cut. 
And when we cut there, we're putting, we're splitting water into OH and H, and we're putting the OH back onto the acid portion, which is the part normally drawn first. That's the part with the C double bond O. And then we're putting the H back onto our alcohol. So in this case, we're going to get the salt of the acid here. Okay, so if we're putting on the putting on the OH, the OH would have to now react with the sodium hydroxide, even though I'm getting too much into the mechanism. And that would give us the salt of the acid. So we would have CH3, then there's a C double bond O, and then we would have O N A. Because even if the, the OH goes back on, it will not have to react with the sodium hydroxide to give us the salt. And we would end up with the corresponding alcohol. And the alcohol here would have the OH group. Again, it's ethanol. So it's the fourth time we are seeing ethanol on this, on this paper overall. All right. So that is that. That should give us four marks. So let's keep racking them up. Okay, part one of C, name the byproduct of the saponification of fats and oils. Now, earlier they told us that the saponification of fats and oils give us a soap. So we cannot say back soap here. We'd have to give them the other thing that we'd get. All right, so we'd actually get, um, we'd actually get a special alcohol, which is called glycerol. And as I said before, yeah, be sure to check out the link in the description below for the video that actually breaks down reactions of esters. And now they're asking us, so I guess since we're talking about soap, they're looking at applications of soap and soapless detergents. All right, state one difference, part two, one difference between the effect of using soaps and soapless detergents on hard water. Okay, and it's just one mark, so we're just going to Hit it right on the head. So, so when we use soaps in um, hard water, soaps do not lather well. In hard water, we get the formation of a scum. So it's a day form scum. All right, and then soapless detergents, on the other hand. So we would not get any scum with, with our soapless detergents. Part D, figure five shows the structures of an amino acid and propene. Right, amino. Amino, we have the NH group there and then acid portion we have the COOH and you can check out another link in the description below that will look at amino acids and how they're joined to actually give us um, polyamides you can look at that addition versus condensation perhaps this question is leading us there but you can check out that video for more details on how the processes um, work State the type of polymerization that amino acid in figure, the amino acid in figure five would undergo. All right, so amino acids would undergo condensation, polymerization. State the general name for the type of polymer formed from the amino acid in figure five. So it would be a polyamide. All right, be sure to check out that. Link to be on the safe side. For the last two marks, state two chemical tests that can be used to distinguish between propene and its polymer. All right, two marks. So the polymer of propene would be polypropene. So test one, test both with acidified KMNO4. Propene decolorizes it, changes it from purple to colorless. All right, polymer does not. 
All right, the next test we could use, we could test both with both of them with Br2 liquid in CCl4. So bromine liquid in tetrachloromethane, again, propene would decolorize um, this um, solution. Propene would change. Propene changes this solution from reddish brown, or you could say brown, to colorless. And we could have used aqueous bromine, that's Br2 aqueous bromine in aqueous medium, that would be yellow. And then the propene would, would decolorize that as well. And the polymer would have no change on it. So of the three tests, um, the propene would decolorize all of the substances. And then the, 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 the polymer would have no effect on the testing reagents. All right, and that would give us our full marks. And just like that, we've come to the end of today's session. Remember to like, share, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so. Check out all the other content material that we have on this channel to serve you. We hope you find value. Couple later.